All right, so it's pretty obvious that DeAndre Ayton, Mikel Bridges, and Picks is not going to get Kevin Durant. The Nets want a lot more than that. How much more? Well, Stephen A. reports that at least two All-Stars is what they want. Other reports say one All-Star, but they're not going to rebuild. They have to be competitive. Brooklyn traded their future to Houston in the James Harden deal, so if they suck, that only helps the Rockets. Brooklyn has to win now without KD. So I have scoped the entire league to come up with the top five KD trades. Before we jump into number five, we have to mention the Warriors. ESPN says that Golden State has interest in bringing KD back. The players have even discussed it and they're cool with it. Of course they are. Steph, Clay, and Draymond don't have a huge ego to say, no, no, we don't need KD. Kevin Durant does though. Bleacher Report says the only team NBA sources have indicated is not a tangible option for Durant is Golden State. What? The man is so scared of what other people think. He's like, no, I will go anywhere, but not the Warriors. Why? Talented teammates, great culture, but I wouldn't get the credit. Ah. <sighs> Okay, I cannot with this dude, but apparently this is how he feels. So let's leave the Warriors out. Also, the Blazers. Odds still have them as one of the top teams with a chance. And Dame openly recruited KD, obviously, but then they ruined it. Once Anthony Simon signed that $100 million deal, he can't be dealt until December 15th. Plus, he's not an all-star. There is a legal way to get this done. They would have to reroute the Jeremy Grant trade, but that's not realistic. I do not see Portland getting this done in the offseason. So what are the top five realistic KD trades? Number five, the Miami Heat. Now KD wants to be in Miami and they want him, but this is a long shot. This is all the way down at number five because the Heat just don't have a lot of assets. Brooklyn wants an all-star under 25 years old and Bam Adebayo fits, but the problem is there's a rule that says no more than one young max player acquired in a trade. They already have Ben Simmons, so Bam and Ben won't work. Also, the Heat can only trade two picks unless they remove protections from another trade to OKC. So there is a lot that has to go down here, but let's throw out a trade idea. The Heat get Kevin Durant and Ben Ben Simmons, the Nets get Bam Adebayo, Tyler Hero on a sign and trade, Max Struess, Nikola Jovic after 30 days, of course, plus three first round picks and two pick swaps. And they get the Cavaliers 2023 first that comes from the Pacers for Duncan Robinson. I told you it was a lot. Now the Nets shed enough salary here for that Tally Hero contract to not interfere with the hard cap. Miami moves Robinson to Indy to make it four firsts and two swaps, which meets the Nets demands for KD. They also get Max Struess, who is one of only six players to shoot 41% from three on at least six attempts per game last year. This is a classic heat culture guy who came out of nowhere. The problem is not getting great value for Ben Simmons, but I guess you could argue that the Heat are taking a big headache off the Nets' hands. Number four, the Pelicans. So the Nets won an all-star under the age of 25. Well, there aren't too many of those not on a max contract. Brandon Ingram, though, is one of those rare players. Jalen Brown is too, but I just don't see the Celtics breaking up their team right after making the finals. Again, if Brooklyn gets another max young player, they would have to move Ben Simmons. So a New Orleans trade has to be mentioned. The Pelicans get Kevin Durant, the Nets get Brandon Ingram, Herb Jones, Willie Hernan Gomez, and a bunch of picks. Let's read them out. A 2023 first from New Orleans, a 2023 swap from the Lakers, 2024 pick from the Bucks, 24 pick from the Lakers, 25 and 27 picks from the Pels. Woo! Okay, this would have to work out in the next two to three years or New Orleans messed up. They would be dealing their second best player in BI plus a great young defender in Herb Jones and all their draft capital. The Nets would jump at this trade package, but does David Griffin have the guts to pull this off? It would be a huge gamble, 
but it could bring a championship to New Orleans? That may never happen. Number three, the Raptors. I don't care that KD doesn't want to be in Toronto. Masai Ujiri knows what getting him could mean. When they traded for Kawhi Leonard, it got a chip, so we can't count them out. Plus, the Raps have Scotty Barnes. If Masai is willing to trade the rookie of the year, you know he's serious. And don't tell me about, oh, what about our future? Who cares? Let's say that Barnes, his ceiling is that the Raptors are competitive for like 10 years. That's not worth one chip. I remember people being upset that they traded DeMar DeRozan, but that loyalty goes right out the window once they hung that banner. So the trade is the Raptors getting Durant, the Nets getting Pascal Siakam, Scotty Barnes, and three first round picks plus two pick swaps. I know that fans want to deal with Siakam and OG Ananobi instead, but Barnes is what puts this package over the top. KD has an all-star teammate in Fred Van Vliet. OG and Fred provide great defense with Gary Trent spacing the floor. I love this fit, especially with Nick Nurse as an elite head coach. Number two, the Suns. Kevin Durant wants to be a son, but they're not gonna give up Devin Booker. This has to be a three-team deal with somebody giving up an all-star for DeAndre Ayton and Mikal Bridges. Bleacher Report says, the most likely spot for KD is Phoenix, multiple teams with Ayton going to a non-Brooklyn team. So what team is gonna give up an all-star for Ayton? The only solution is like a wild four or five team trade. Tell me in the comments, who says no to this? The Nets get Donovan Mitchell, Mikel Bridges, Cam Johnson, OG Ananobi, Chris Boucher, a Suns first from 2029 and two pick swaps. The Suns get KD, the Jazz get Ben Simmons, three first from the Suns, and the Raptors get a sign and trade DeAndre Ayton. Let's break this down one by one. Obviously the Nets have to give up Ben to get Donovan Mitchell because they're both on max contracts, but they also get two young elite wings in OG and Bridges, a great shooter in Cam Johnson, and the rights to three Suns picks. Huge value. The Nets ship Spida for Ben Simmons, who they could possibly build around, or three more picks to add to the five they just got for Rudy Gobert. The Raptors land DeAndre Ayton for just OG and Boucher, which is not a lot. Now, I wouldn't normally put this at the number two deal because so much has to happen, but all these reports say KD is about to be a son. But the number one trade is nothing. And this is the most important line of this trade video. My guess is nothing happens because you can see how complicated a KD trade actually is. I think the Nets leadership has had it with letting these players run their franchise by refusing to give Kyrie a long-term deal and refusing to trade KD for a weak package. The Nets are taking back power of their own organization. The longer this drags on, the more I'm believing the Nets could actually just run it back. And look, I get it. At first, it was like unthinkable that KD and Kyrie would stay put. But isn't that what we thought about Russell Westbrook on the Lakers? When the season ended last year, there was no way he would come back. Now it's a reality. The Nets are done letting players run their franchise. And letting KD go for a trash package would be letting KD have control. So maybe they keep him. Look at their roster. KD, Kyrie, Ben Simmons, plus defensive depth, TJ Warren and Royce O'Neal. Shooters, Joe Harris, Patty Mills, and Seth Curry. That is a good roster, on paper at least. Why not keep these guys together? I mean, they say winning cures all. There's a lot wrong with the Nets right now, but what if they look for trades, but then before the deadline, they are winning and feeling good. I mean, yes, Steve Nash is still their head coach, but I don't hate this. Also, Shams is reporting that the Lakers are not being aggressive trying to get Kyrie. So maybe nothing happens this off season. And knowing how unpredictable the NBA has been the last few years, maybe the Nets mess around and win the chip. Uh, it would be amazing. Um, yeah, that's definitely one of the one of my goals uh, personally. Nah, 
Yeah, they still have Ben Simmons. And speaking of future stars who just all of a sudden have become a no-show, what happened to Imani Bates? I saw that question posed on Reddit the other day and I was like, what did happen? This kid was supposed to be the next Kevin Durant and now he may not even get drafted. From the projected number one overall pick, a few years later, a second round pick at best. So I dug into it and it's a really interesting story. Check it out.